found out I was pregnant in late April of 2013 and I started losing some blood in the pregnancy around May 1st. Um, of course I took that as a bad sign. So of course I went to my doctor and my doctor did an ultrasound and found out that the placenta had become partially detached from the uterine wall and it had become ripped. So there was a hole in it and the hole in it was allowing blood to escape. The blood, of course, was supposed to remain in the placenta and nourish my child. And um, the bad news was there was no way to fix this because you could not do surgery with the pregnancy and the baby was way too young to remove by any kind of C-section. She would not survive if, if we had to take her out. And there was no medicine to take. So it was a, a hopeless situation in the sense that there was nothing we could do to fix it. But I had quite a, a tremendous amount of the pregnancy left. Gemma was due on January 1st, and it was only May. So I did wonder, how am I gonna get through the rest of this pregnancy? So what happened was on May 10th, it was a Friday, the bleeding got a lot worse. And I had been instructed to go to the emergency room if it got worse so that I didn't bleed to death. And so on that day, I went to the emergency room and I was very relieved to find out Gemma still had a heartbeat because I was always concerned, how much blood can I lose without losing Gemma? So that was the good news of that visit, but the bad news was the bleeding was very heavy. And again, there was nothing we could do about it. So my doctor was called on um, a cell phone and I was given that cell phone and um, he had a very heavy sound to his voice. And he said, the only thing I can say is strict bed rest, that you cannot get out of bed, you cannot move, and that I would likely miscarry. But if the baby survived the pregnancy, the most likely best outcome would be that she would be born premature. But what was wonderful during those days in the midst of all this sadness and agony is my children, they um, helped me out in so many ways. They did not know what was wrong with me. We didn't want to scare them, but they knew I wasn't feeling well. And I remember getting a call from the nurse at my doctor's office, re-emphasizing that I needed to stay in bed and not get out of bed. And I remember when I was on the phone with her, seeing my four children running around in the house at the same time and thinking, if she could see the scene, you know, she would realize how impossible this is going to be. And um, I also didn't tell her that my husband was gonna leave on that Wednesday morning for a mandatory business trip, which would go until Friday for two days. And I did not know how we were gonna get through that. So um, the night before he left on that trip, we talked and he asked me, do you want me to wake you up in the morning before I leave? Because I need to leave really early. So I said, um, being kind of responsible about the situation, just leave if I'm asleep and don't wake me up. So on Wednesday morning, on May 15th, I woke up and he was already gone. And when I woke up in bed, I was already laying in a pool of blood which was very scary because I was told to observe strict bed rest. And if I had already been sleeping, I thought, how much more still can I be? You know, I had lost any kind of influence over the bleeding. So I saw this scene and I thought, oh no, what am I gonna do? Um, my husband's already in an airplane. So what I need to do first is get the kids set up for breakfast and get them safe and eating. And then I need to manage this situation as best as I can. So the kids helped to get each other ready and they sat in their seats and I said to them, um, I need to go upstairs for a while. Please don't get out of your seats no matter what. Don't get up. I was very worried if someone got hurt um, I could not help them. I could not lift a child right now. And a mother, of course, would lift a child to help them no matter what, but I would hurt my unborn child and myself. So I didn't want anyone to get hurt, but I also didn't want anyone to sneak up on me and see the bleeding, the trauma. I didn't want to scare them. So I begged them, please don't get up out of your seats. Even if you finish your breakfast, just stay in your seat. 
I went in my bedroom and then I went into my bathroom and I closed both doors. I wanted to hear the door if they came upstairs so that they couldn't sneak up on me. And when I got to the bathroom, I was exhausted and now the bleeding was even worse than when I had gone to the emergency room the previous Friday. So I was laying on the floor and I thought to myself, okay, I need to call 911 now. I realized though, as I'm on the floor in the bathroom, I did not have my cell phone. I couldn't believe it. I didn't have it with me and I had at, at that moment no idea where I put it. So I didn't have my cell phone. So I thought next I need to scream to get the kids to come upstairs to help me to get the phone. Um, but I realized I had those two closed doors to scream through and even the slightest exertion would cause even more bleeding. At this point by going up the stairs, I didn't know if the placenta was dangling by a thread. So if I screamed, maybe I could just rip it open for once and for all and it could be the end. So I wanted to scream, but I didn't think it was safe. Um, so I couldn't scream and I realized I didn't have my phone and I couldn't scream and I thought, Surely by now, one of the kids should wander upstairs and come say something, anything. And it was silent downstairs. I mean, it was completely silent. You couldn't hear a word. And so now I was even worried about them. Did they get out of the house? Are they hurt? What are they doing? And I couldn't go check on them either. So in this moment, I'm losing a ton of blood. I don't have my phone. I can't scream. My children aren't coming upstairs. I don't know how much more time I have, but I'm imagining I have very little time left to be bleeding at this rate. So just then I said, please, Cardinal Newman, make the bleeding stop. And it stopped immediately. It was flowing rapidly and it just came to a hard stop. And I stood up. And I looked around and I said, Cardinal Newman, did you just make the bleeding stop? I mean, I knew he did, but that's what I said. And just then I smelled roses filled the bathroom air. And I inhaled and it was incredible. And I said, thank you, Cardinal Newman. Oh, wow, thank you. And I was just stunned. And then it ended and I thought, I've got to check on my children. So I hustled downstairs. I opened both doors and I jogged down the steps because I knew Cardinal Newman had cured me and I knew I was okay and I knew Gemma was okay. I mean, I asked for the bleeding to stop, but I knew that if the bleeding had stopped, Cardinal Newman would make sure she was okay as well. So I hustled downstairs and I went into the kitchen and I was worried about what I would see with them because it had been so quiet. And I was prepared to say, what are you doing? <laughs> and uh, I went into the kitchen and I saw four of them sitting at the table. And I went in there and I stuck to my script, probably from all the stress and everything that was going on. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> and my oldest son said, well, we're just sitting here, just like you told us. And I said, I know, but I told you to stay in your seats. <laughs> because I was so overwhelmed with all of these <laughs> the emotions of almost dying and then being cured and seeing that they were okay. And I, I was so grateful. I said, thank you, Cardinal Newman. We were all okay. And I had an appointment with the doctor that same day at three o'clock. And I went to the doctor and I had an ultrasound and the doctor um, looked at the baby and the first thing he said was, the baby looks perfect. Everything looks perfect. And he was very happy and he looked at me and he looked amazed and I was so thankful. It was exactly what I thought had happened. You know, I figured Cardinal Newman um, fixed everything up in there for me nicely. <laughs> you know, Gemma was supposed to be born, um, if at all, premature and small, but she was born eight and a half pounds at a very healthy weight, bigger than average on December 27th. I'm so filled with joy and gratitude and um, I can't believe that it's me, you know, after um, Cardinal Newman died in 1890 and here it is uh, nearly 130 years later and I could be a part of this process. I'm reminded of something he wrote, you know, about um, God has created me to do some definite service 
and I feel like I'm a link in the chain. It's just great for so many people to know that if an ordinary person like myself can be miraculously cured by such a, uh, an, an intellectual powerhouse, and such a holy man, that nobody is off limits to ask for help in their lives. And the words thank you don't seem to be sufficient, but that's all I seem to be able to keep saying is thank you. <laughs> but I, I, I want to thank God and Cardinal Newman with all of my heart.